first scripture reading is Psalm 111, which can be found in your Pew Bible on page 491. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, but studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Here is the reading. Thanks be to God. The second scripture reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 1, and verses 4 through 7, which can be found in your Bible on pages 638. And 639. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Jeremiah, sorry, <laughs> sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Sing a hymn of proclamation. 
to experience community with people that believe some of the things we believe. And yet to hear a word from you that may inform our journey and our direction. Lord, thank you for gathering us here together, for uniting us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable, O oh Lord, in your sight. And may these words be in a cup that your people can receive. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <coughs> it's good to see you all this morning. And I don't say that as a formality, but it really is good to see you. Sometimes when I look over and talk with some of you during the week and I know some of the things I've got, some people got married, <laughs> some people have performances, some people are looking for jobs, but when I look and I see all of you all, it is good to see us gathered in this space today. So I'd like to use as a sermonic thing, God's plan starting over, God's plan starting over. So I want to share some good news with you all. I finished my 1,000 piece puzzle. <laughs> God has 
this plan, and it won't happen today. The plan that Jeremiah is writing about for the Israelites will take about 70 years, which, hey, that's a little period of time, and some of them might not be around when God's plan comes to full fruition. I imagine his readers had to slow down a bit to ponder this letter. I imagine that they had to take it piece by piece. It would take time because Jeremiah was asking them literally to start all over again. The text says, build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Build houses and live in them. Okay, this is like that record that, okay. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage. That they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there, and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. And pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. In other words, Jeremiah and God is, are asking these people to start all over again, piece by piece even after they've lost everything. So can I state the obvious? Starting over is not easy. There's incredible loss here. There's incredible trauma here. The gravity of their loss is unbelievable. This is like a chess game that has gone very badly, resulting in them losing valuable people. There's no way around it. The enormity of this moment is bad. And yet Jeremiah is calling them to think about their future. You might not feel like it today, but God still has plans for you. God's plan. And as we learned a few Sundays ago, land was a sign of the future and gave them hope. And it's always important to see a future and to see a future with yourself in it. That's why the Purpose Driven Life sold so many copies. Because meaning drives us. Seeing a future is not only good for the young, but it's good for the old. Knowing that in the future, this shall materialize, it's also good for the church to see a future. We too are being forced to change. We too are sort of being driven into exile. We didn't go willingly, but it's being thrust on us. Change or die. But we are in God's plan. A few years ago, Drake came out with a song, The Rap, God's Plan. And he went on to give all this money out to people who had never experienced that kind of money. He made a cheap video, and the money that would have gone into the video, almost $1 million, he actually used to give away. And he labels his whole philanthropic effort God's plan. But what does giving all this money away have to do with God's plan? Many folks scrambled around to pontificate this title and what it meant, what could it actually mean, what was Drake trying to get at by saying that this was God's plan. Drake never really said anything. He was just passing out money. In the Old Testament, it's all about God's plan and the fulfillment of God's plan. It's not necessarily in the very, 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 very beginning, though we don't know the beginning. But when God is talking to Abraham, God more or less says, I am making you a father of nations. I am making you a blessing to be a blessing. Isn't that the premise of the New Testament as well? To whom much is given? This notion that you are blessed and then you bless others, where well, Drake takes his riches and he helps others. Wonder what that would look like if Chick-fil-A and Walmart would take their blessings <laughs> and bless other people. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Wonder if the corporations got this notion of instead of hoarding your blessings, that when you are blessed, you are meant to bless others. Amen. Wonder if the church even got this notion, us, amen. that when we got paid, when we got blessed, we are a blessing to be a blessing to other people. Yes. That instead of hoarding and saving and saving like the rich
rich men in the Bible? What if we got this notion and it really took hold of the churches and our preparation, God's plan? Here at United Church of Hyde Park, we are made up of three denominations. We're made up of the Presbyterian, the Methodist, and the United Church of Hyde, I mean, United Church, no, the United Church of Christ. <laughs> Getting twisted there. Anyway, I'm ordained in the United Church of Christ, and in that denomination, the autonomy rests with the congregation. Because the United Church of Christ believes that in every era, and every time, each body must discern with the Holy Spirit God's plan for them. God's plan on 95th Street might look different than God's plan in Hyde Park. God's plan in the Gold Coast might look different than God's plan in Barrington, Illinois. God's plan is not fixed, but it changes. One day we build homes, and another day we tear them down. One day we reach out, and another day we reflect deeply, inwardly. God's plan looks different, but it engages all of us, our soul and our minds and our spirits. God is still have you ever heard a song and you liked it and it got stuck in your head and you couldn't get it out? Yes. No matter how you tried, that song just stuck in your head. That's what happened with the Israelites. They got it stuck in their head and their consciousness that they were God's people and that God had a plan for them to prosper them and not harm them. And so, what they had been in a few wars. And so what they had lost. And so what they had been uprooted from their lives. And so what they were now in a new place, not of their choosing. And so what they were being asked to sing and be happy. It all mattered, certainly it mattered, but what mattered more was they were God's chosen people. And God did have a plan. And they couldn't shake stuck in their head like that song that you just can't quite shake. We are God's people and God has a plan. I can't shake that God feels very close and I believe that God has a plan for the church even when we don't necessarily see it. Even when we're in a box. And I've invested in God's plan too even though I don't know all of what it is because God is still speaking. But I know, like Drake, we can be a blessing. That's not difficult. And like the Israelites, we can live and we can be a witness even in dark times. And maybe for now, that's all of God's plan we need to know. God is still speaking. This week, a friend of mine had to be there for her daughter because she broke up with her boyfriend. Do you guys remember that first love? Remember when you thought this was it? Yes. yes. She worked really hard on this relationship with this guy. They sacrificed a lot for each other. And they were two really good young adults that were in love with each other. Two really good people. But they started growing apart. It's hard to imagine at 22, but they did start growing apart. And life happened. It suddenly became evident that they were growing in two different directions. First love, early love. It feels like the world is coming to an end, reminding us that starting over can feel daunting. I don't want to start over again. Tomorrow is like some very, very, very far away place that we are dreading. The intensity of now is so heavy. And so my friend sat with her daughter as she wailed in tears for the end of a relationship. You feel like you can't go on without this person. The idea of starting all over again seems preposterous. But we do it all the time. And we take the lessons that we have learned along with us. We did it before and we do it again. We look at people who have suffered losses and we think that they will not go on 
And then something amazing happens over time. We do it again. The Israelites still had it on their tongue that they were God's chosen people. They still had it in their psyche, their identity, that they were blessed. If starting over is part of God's plan, and we want to be in God's plan, then we can start over. Somebody needs to know that at 50, you can start over. Somebody needs to know at 60, you can start over. Somebody needs to know after you've made the mistake 10 times and your whole family has given up on you, you can still start over. You can still start from scratch. But you're not really starting from scratch because you've got some lessons and some bumps, Marsha. You've got some things happening there that hopefully will guide you. God is calling us too. God is doing a new thing in our midst, and sometimes it doesn't necessarily feel good to be continued. But we are in God's plan. So I say to you as I come to end, the puzzle, though it begins with many pieces laid before us, slowly the puzzle does come together. A piece here, a piece there. And it takes a lot of work. Maybe God's plan has not always been recognized, even in our midst. But we still can bless and be a blessing to others. We still, like the Israelites, can build again. We still can start new ministries. And even with all the bad stuff like the Israelites, we have to not shake it, not be able to shake it that we are God's chosen people. And we can start again. We will lay out all the pieces before us. We will respond to the needs in our community. And we will see this time period not as one of utter decimation. We will see it as an opportunity to discover God's plan for us again. God's plan. We will begin again, but we're not really beginning again because we're beginning again surrounded by all the wisdom that surrounds us. God's plan. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, like most people, we like easy answers. We like things to be easy and cut out. And life sometimes can be hard. Remind us that you began a good work here at United Church of High Park. And you have not left us. And you are here. And you have not only a plan for this church, but you have a plan for this community. You have a plan for your people. And we are not to be overwhelmed by how many pieces there are. It is to take it day by day. Building homes and planting seeds and witnessing to your goodness in the world. Amen. Amen.